Rhonda. Welcome yes. to the Organized 365 Podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited. I'm nervous excited. I, I have no idea why you're nervous. I, I feel like I have talked to you more than maybe my husband in the last couple of months. <laughs> we have gotten to see each other a few times. That's so great. We have. You, well, we met when you were um, doing your certification out in Arizona, mm -hmm. right? So that was what, yep. September, end of September? Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. then... I was like, oh, you're from Missouri. And I already knew we were doing a homeschool convention in Missouri. I'm like, hey, Rhonda, you want to help us at the homeschool convention? And you were like, every day, you were there every day. It was so awesome. Yes. I was like, yes, yes, yes. Homeschooling in Missouri and Lisa, win, win, win. But then you took the crazy to the next level and you and your husband came to Cincinnati and helped us with the Cincinnati homeschool convention. And then at every break, you and your husband and I would go out to lunch. It was so awesome. I got to meet him and we got to talk about so many different ideas. And finally, finally, Rhonda, you filled out the Wednesday podcast form. I know. I, I, I probably should have done it a lot sooner, but I'm here now. I think instead of asking people at the end, like, what do you wish you had known sooner about Organize 365? I think I'm going to start asking about why did you not fill out the Wednesday podcast form <laughs> sooner? I, you know, I, I don't know what made me hesitant. It's interesting because in listening to all of your podcasts, and let's be clear, I've listened to all of them multiple times. Um, and then digging into the Wednesday podcast of the people, because at first, I didn't think I wanted those podcasts. I'm like, I have stuff to do here. I don't need to hear what everybody else is doing. And now they've become one of my favorites Yep. Um, to listen to just regular people, their journey, their story, their situation. And even if their situation is totally different from mine, I get something out of it. And I think that that just, I don't know. I just made it a priority. It, I hadn't made it a priority before. I always knew I wanted to do it. So I finally did it. And here I am. So Rhonda, you're a mom, you're a teacher. So I want you to tell people to go fill out the podcast form. Yes, go fill out the podcast form. I'm a little nervous, but it's not scary. Like, it's like Lisa's in a webinar, but I can talk back to her. <laughs> it's like right, planning well, day. You're just right there. It's like a live planning day. It is. Right, how, how did you first find Organize 365? Mm, that's a great question. So my cousin, her name's Jennifer, um, we're in the app together. Some of you may have seen us refer to each other as sister cousins uh, because neither of us have sisters, but we're really close as cousins. She called me and said, oh my gosh, Rhonda, I think I found it. I found the thing we've been looking for. And I'm like, what, what is it? Because it could be any number of things. Um, and she sent me the Sunday basket podcast at the time they were pulled out there were a few more of them um, in that separate label that title and I started listening and I'm like okay okay yeah this this makes sense all right okay and so I just went all in um, I tried to make my own Sunday basket like so many other people and I'm like forget it forget it I just I just need to buy the basket so I can have the course, so I can hear the teaching, so I can really do this right. I like to have the right things for the job. So um, then I just started devouring the podcast and you are blowing my mind every single, in fact, I have my notebook. Look, I have my notebook here with all the past notes that I took two and a half years ago. So it was fall of 2020 um, when I really started, you know, digging into that. And um, it, it started clicking. It wasn't perfect. I still do things with my Sunday basket that I'm like, oh, I need to put that idea in there. Oh, that's where that goes, Sunday basket. But um, from there, I went to, I've got the Sunday basket. And then, fun fact, I actually bought, it was called All Access. I bought that for my mom as a Christmas present. I'm like, oh, this is what my mom needs. I never can find the right Christmas gift for her. She always buys stuff for herself, which is excellent because she's worked really hard. She's a businesswoman and she's worked really hard to be able to do that for herself. But so I gave it to her early. It was like October. And um, she was like, um, this is overwhelming. I, I can't do this. So I took it back. 
I said, well, can I have it? Emailed customer service, which of course they were wonderful and said, um, sure, here's your login. Here's, and then it was, you know, no looking back from there. So tell us who is in your uh, home with you so we can get a framework for you and then we'll get going. Yeah, yeah. So my husband of 28 years, we just celebrated our 28th wedding anniversary, Casey. Then I have a 17-year-old son and a 16-year-old daughter still living at home. And I have a 25 and a 23-year-old that are out. And we so have dogs. What was, so what was it? You, like you and Jennifer are talking. You're like, we found mm -hmm. it. This is the thing. What were you looking for? <laughs> like, what oh. were you looking for? What did you need to get organized? How organized were you before you started to organize 365? What was working? What wasn't working? Tell us all the things. Oh my goodness. How much time do we have? Um, so um, we were just looking for something that resonated with our person. We didn't realize that's what we're looking for. So I'm kind of saying this with hindsight. We had tried a lot of other organizing types of things tools, the binders, the courses, things like that, reading people's books. Um, I wasn't really into podcasts yet. She was a little ahead of me with YouTube and podcast Instagram. Um, but it just never stuck. Like, I think we were looking for the thing that resonated, that really put um, a system into place that we could latch onto, not just for four or five weeks that we could really see ourselves latching onto because so many of the things, and I read and have done some great things. Fly Lady helped me at a point in my life, which was really good with a little bit of get dressed to your shoes, a morning routine, because I had babies at the time. And my first two are very close together and my second two are close together, but there's this gap in between. So she helped me with a little bit of that and you know picked up little things here and there. And then I read a book called The Messies Manual, Sandra Felton. Um, I'm totally a messy. So, but for the first time, that book showed me that I wasn't broken, that I'm messy because of three main reasons. I'm, I'm sentimental. Um, I am forgetful. And what's the other one? Oh, and I'm frugal. So that caused me to keep and hang on to things. So that was a good aha moment, you know, from, from her, uh, she's called the organizer lady, but even those types of things didn't carry me across like a finish line. Um, so we were just searching for something that stuck, something that we could really embed into our lives and not just do for a weekend or do for a month or, or all of that. And did you mention yet that you homeschool? Have you always homeschooled? I have always homeschooled. Although okay. fun fact, when my husband and I were married in 1995, we were not going to have children. We were focused on our careers, our degrees. We were going to have no children. Um, well, you know, so the Lord has a sense of humor, right? Um, yes. <laughs> we, we did both grow up on farms. We both grew up on dairy farms, but coming together, we met in college. We were not living on a farm. So yes, I am the quintessential. I live on a hobby farm. We've had all the animals. I milked goats. I made my own bread. I've made butter. I, I made all the cheeses. Like, you know, yes, I've done all the stereotypical homeschool things, except the jumper and the tennis shoes. I haven't done that. Okay. So what was your, what was your career? Have we talked about this? And I'm teaching, it. teaching. I was an educator. Oh. So oh. my bachelor's degree is math education. Um, and I taught in the classroom for really just like a year and a half and a couple of summer schools. And then my university contacted me and offered me an assistantship to get my master's. So I was a teaching assistant while I got my master's in mathematics. And then that opened doors to work in educational research and also help, I worked with a local office. It was called the RPDC, Regional Professional Development Center. And we were in charge regionally of disseminating and even helping track teachers' professional development. So I worked with our Department of Education in Missouri, and I worked with local school districts, and I worked with professors, and yeah. So okay, that, yeah, that we was never, where I was headed. The 18 conversations we've had, that hasn't come up yet. <laughs> I love that because it doesn't matter. I, I was meeting with someone this morning. She's like, everything you say is always new. Like I even have more. Sometimes I think I'm going to run out of stories, but yet I never do. We, yeah. especially as women, we have so much 
lived experience and we don't do like a single track job type thing so we just have like all this stuff that we cobble together it's fascinating i love talking to people because there's always more to know and we tend to forget ourselves the experiences that we've had no it's so true and all of that happened before i had kids right <laughs> like, right i mean i had one or two i had one or two in the midst of some of that yeah i didn't finish my master's degree i mean yeah until I graduate until I was pregnant with my second. So, cause I thought I was gonna write a master's thesis while on maternity leave. No, that didn't happen. Sounds like something I would say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm like, oh, so, it's eight weeks, they sleep all the time, right? I mean, how hard can it be? So I know you really want to talk about, you know, your process of going from the Sunday basket to completely organized. You mentioned that you were, um, a hot mess and that you have all of these kids and that you've been searching for this for a long time. And now you are a certified organizer and you're talking to people at the homeschool conventions and you have all of these ideas about where Organize 365 needs to go next. And, and I think this is a commonality. Like once we get organized and Organize 365 is the vehicle we collectively have used through this podcast to get organized, like the energy to get other people organized is just like at a, at an 11 out of 10. <laughs> Um, so what was your process of from the Sunday basket, getting the all access back from your mom? When did you first notice something was organized that wasn't organized before and why, you know, three years later, is this still working? Okay. So such a great question. And I'm so glad you asked these ahead of time. So I have time to think, and I took more notes last night. I'm like, okay, what else do I want to make sure I say? Um, so for me jumping into all access and jumping into your podcast um and and just you blowing my mind over and over again with um your why that podcast like 268 and then there was another one of um what's another one of my favorites and i go back to it too decision fatigue and then the morning afternoon and evening routines and that you need a schedule the one I didn't like, I don't remember which podcast it was, but you said, you've said this several times, so it's probably in a lot of them, but I didn't want to hear it, Lisa. I didn't want to hear that it's going to take 18 months to three years to get your house mm -hmm. organized. I'm like, no, it's not. I'm going to have all of December. I am going to get, I am going to watch, I'm not watching 15 minutes a day. Side note, I don't do real great with small snippet routines. Give me four hours, eight hours, 16 hours, and I will bust it and knock it out. But I've learned sometimes in life, you have to chunk things and you have to be okay with the little bits at a time. So jumping into that and, and just, I, I followed it to a T in the order that you said, and I watched my kitchen. My kitchen wasn't too bad, fortunately, because we had just added on. It was a new kitchen. I spent two years planning how I wanted it all laid out. Cause I cook a lot. I've cooked a lot. I'm not cooking a lot right now, full disclosure, but every, I went through a phase of life where everything was homemade. Everything was from scratch, mill my own wheat, make my own bread, the whole nine, <laughs> which was wonderful. I love that season. I know, I know, uh, but I became a food Nazi. So I had to back that up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so my kitchen had been pretty well planned out, but the things that you were saying in podcasts and in the program, just made me look at my space, my things, my stuff differently. Um, and it made me really examine, but then you move into the bedroom, which was, has always been an issue with me. If my mom were sitting right here next to me, you know, she would say, uh, couldn't even walk in the girl's room because there's clothes all over the floor. I'm like, but mom, this side is clean and this side is dirty. I have a system. She's like, that is not a system. Um, so even as an adult, sifting through and making decisions on the things I want to keep and the things I want to get rid of. You gave me permission to do it my way. Like you're blowing my mind with these new ideas, these new thoughts, but you gave me permission to be me. If I want to keep 25 pink t-shirts, I can totally do that. If that's my favorite color and that's the only shirt I really wear, I have permission to do that. If I want to only have three t-shirts, two pair of pants and eight pair of shoes, I can do my closet that way. So I, I think digging into that was definitely um, freeing for me. It was freeing and liberating, and but yet it gave me a framework at the same time. So the first thing organized, though, I kind of went on a long-term rabbit trail, but 
I did the Sunday basket. I got all access back, but the, one of the first things I really actively pursued was the holiday blitz. Um, and that revolutionized our home and our Christmas. We have a great Christmas. It's not like I was throwing it out the window, doing it terrible for years up until, uh, watching and participating in the blitz. But it gave, again, gave me permission. Ask your people, what's their favorite food? What's the one thing? If we didn't do it, it wouldn't feel like Christmas. What are the things you could do without? And you realize you're spinning your wheels in so many areas, which again, just permeates your podcasts and the programs and the courses is to your situation, your family, your stage of life. Because now, even just two and a half to three years later, when I re-listen to some of those podcasts, I pick up something else because I'm in a different place in my organizing and I'm not done. I'm not finished. I I have some storage room work to do this summer. My scrapbooking and um, my scrapbook room and photos are a huge priority for me. Um, So I'm not finished. And you talk about me jumping into being a certified organizer. I certainly didn't have it all together. And I don't even consider myself having it all together right now. I just have places to put it and systems to process it. So that, I don't know, I probably did more than answer your question um, on that. So I love that you mentioned the holiday blitz. And at the time of this Mm -hmm. recording, you guys are going to hear this right before the back to school blitz. The back to school blitz and the holiday blitz are the two blitzes Mm -hmm. that are the biggest that we do. And I think have the best impact. Um, of things that, especially when you're in the active parenting years, these are the two events that are not really addressed in any other organizing. I mean, like back to school is as far as buying back to school supplies, but like, that's just like one of the five days we talk about, like everyone needs to get prepared for the 10 most productive weeks of the year, which is Labor Day until the second week in November, all humans. And And Americans, we are conditioned to get ready for the school year. So it doesn't matter if you're 93, you're still remembering going back to school. Like your body is conditioned after 20 years of doing this, 25 years of doing this, that in the fall, we get ready for the most productive 10 weeks. And so really making visible the invisible work, all of the invisible work of getting ready for a productive fall, making sure you have new eyeglasses and another inhaler and all all these things that you need to do um, really frees up your mental bandwidth, your decision fatigue. And when you start the school year, you're not like running around like, oh, now I gotta go grab this or I forgot this paper or I forgot that thing. And the same thing with the holidays. Like, of course we know we're supposed to save money for for the gifts. Never done that. I always use a credit card. Anyways. (laughs) It's like my thing. Um, Like we know there are gifts. We know there's going to be, you know, whatever religious thing you celebrate. We know there's going to be Thanksgiving dinner at somebody's house and you're supposed to bring something or do it all. But it's, there's a whole bunch of additional invisible work that when you can see it three, four weeks before it's going to happen, you're not in the emotional throes of, well, I can't not give a candle for aunt so-and-so because they're going to give me a gift, but then I don't give one to this aunt because they're not actually here. And do we keep doing this? And what am I going to give them? Like, just, you make so much better decisions when you're not in the emotional throes of it. And those two blitzes really, really do give you a great example of what planning day is like, what the whole product, like imagine your whole life living that way, like analyzing your whole life and the phases of life you're in. I do think it's interesting that you're saying that you still have things to do. I want to address the scrapbook room and the photos that literally can be a 10 year journey and you should enjoy it. Like you just set it up as like a hobby because that's long, but also it's been more than 18 months and you're not done yet. So I was right. No, I was just kidding. I know. I know. I know. That's what I want to say to everybody. But I say that, right. I say that because a, we set ourselves up for failure when we think it's going to get done in a weekend and then we degrade ourselves. So I just want to be honest. I don't know why everybody's not being honest. You would never say you can get out of debt in a weekend. You would never say that you can lose all of the baby weight in one month. Like, so why do we pretend that we could do that with getting organized and productive, especially if you've never been organized and productive before? I think it's because we've been told that if you stick it in these bins and baskets where you can't really see it, then you're organized. And that is not true. You know, you, all those things you talked about with the blitz, it, it is the culmination of what has happened in my life, being proactive 
instead of reactive. Like I could talk through a whole mm-hmm. podcast mm-hmm. on the blitzes and planning days and the benefits of looking at your time, like seriously stopping and looking and processing and thinking and prioritizing and choosing. And that doesn't mean the plan goes exactly as you said it. Like I can make a plan. I can make a plan like a boss. It can be color coded. It can be to the minute. It can, but the reality of life doesn't always allow you to execute it that way. But you, you have a framework and you, you have put in your mind that these are my main things. These are my priorities. This is what I've thought through. These are the things that can wait. These are the things that can't. And, you know, those two things, the, the proactive from reactive, and then the three decluttering organizing and productive. I have seen that happen in so many spaces now that I've been through, you know, what was the 100 day and now it's turned into the whole year program, which is brilliant, by the way. Um, As I've cycled back through those spaces, being able to see, oh my gosh, Lisa's right again. (laughs) Like, this is what happens. Um, What was your question? See, I think I've talked about that. I don't think I had one. I don't think I had one. Um, I think you know, when you were saying time and making a plan, and this is not something I've really talked about yet on the podcast, but now that I'm in my PhD program and I'm doing the research, I'm realizing that, I don't know, because I see things before they happen. And I've always been this way. Like I did not have friends as a child because I was always talking to adults because I was always talking about things that were going to be in the future. Kids don't want to talk about that. So I'm always seeing kind of like where society is going or where we are going. And, um, so I'm frustrated now that when I look at the research, things haven't been researched that I want to research. I know big shocker, but what I find with house work specifically, the the work we do in a house, it is almost always conflated with caregiving, either in the active parenting years or caregiving of elderly. And I'm like, interesting. Like, so I have found a couple of studies about housework in the empty nesting years and I cannot wait to read those. I've, I've earmarked them, but I haven't read them yet because housework is independent of caregiving, but it's almost always conflated. And when you mentioned time, I was thinking, you know what is different? Because there just are differences about being a man and a woman um, up until this point in society and how we've run society. And when I think about you, Rhonda, and you know homeschooling four kids and all the things that you've done, Um, And I think about myself and what I've done as an active parent versus what Greg has done as an active parent, which doesn't make one parent better than the other, or just even about this last four days that I've had, when Grayson had to go to the hospital because he was dehydrated, I went with Abby, not Greg. And of course, Greg was the one getting cataract surgery. So of course I went because, you know, he did take me to get my colonoscopy, Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But whenever anything happens in the house, you go to mom first and mom's schedule is the one that flexes. And so for years, even if Greg and I both had to go to work and something happened with the kids or the house or the whatever, I was the one that worked from home. It wasn't Greg who worked from home because he would say he worked for another employer and I worked for myself. But even when I was teaching, like I was like, my schedule is the one that has always had to flex. And when I do look at caregiving in this research and just like overarching, I'm like, holy cow, there are only four men or three men on Greg's side of the family that are over 40 years old, himself, his brother-in-law, and his dad. All of the other men don't aren't alive anymore. And on my side, my father, my grandfather, all the men have been gone for a long time. And I'm like, wow, women live so much longer than men. And these, these articles that I'm coming up against is like women care for men. They pass away. Who cares for the women? I was like, mind blown. I I'm, I'm almost like not happy. I know this information now. I'm like, who's going to drive me for my cataract surgery? How does my sister get to anything? She's not married. Like, like so much of America is built on a nuclear family of two parents living together. Even how we run our schools, how we run everything is assuming there are two adults to do whatever. Um, And so anyways, when I think about time, our time has to be so flexible. 
So you can't not make a plan because then you don't make progress, but you can't also make a rigid plan because you make progress, but then the un the unexpected always happens. And it usually falls to the woman to flex the plan, no matter what her position is. It it just it just does. I mean, that's just the reality we live in today. Now, will that be different in the future? Maybe. I don't know. But I'm not in charge of like having generational change. Like what the changes that you see in society or that you want to make different, global warming, all that stuff. The last place those changes happen is in the household. Because in the household, yeah. you're still a kid or you have your own needs or you have your own way of doing things or like you get stuck in your rut and it's hard for you to even see your rut because who's going to point it out because you're in the household. So anyways, that that idea of time, being able to see your time, plan your time, be flexible with your time. I mean, there's when I have a plan and my plan does not go my way, I'm not a happy person. I, I'm not bad now. But when I was in the active parenting years, like I would blow a gasket. I'd be like, when do I get time for me? And basically it's when the children are out of the house and then only for a small period of time. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, you never stop being a mom, even when right. you're adults. Right. So there right. are still those things. I think, yeah. that, I think a lot of those things that you touched on, um, that uh, <clears throat> as, as a whole, we can certainly speak to tendencies that women tend to be more gifted in these areas and men tend to be more gifted in those areas. And then you're going to have your your anomalies where those are more flipped. And then you're going to have those right. that blend together really well. You have your traditional, non-traditional. Yeah. Um, I just think we have to be open to, um, you know, something that in, in our house, we've always tried to stick to is that understanding, learning information about yourself and the people you live with, like what's their personality type? Yes. What are they like? What are they not like? How do they run? having that information brings understanding. And when you can have understanding that can bring grace and then you can really see how it all can go together for the best. Um, because, you know, my husband is very different from me yet. We're very similar in, in other ways. But I, I think we forget that in our home, especially when I was during those really active in the throes of the homeschooling, all four kids, you know, crazy pants, um, every day, that I forget that our homes, even though I felt very isolated, it my home is still like a pebble, you know, in a pond. And there are still concentric circles going out from it because we, we do have friends and do things. So here, I'm gonna blow everybody's mind. Homeschoolers, we're very well socialized, okay? <laughs> I have to say no more than I say yes. My kids would talk to anybody, even a wall, old, young, you know, their social calendars are cram packed. So there's that debunked. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to say, Rhonda, you and I are kind of the same person. Like, uh, if you put us in front of people, we're just going to talk until we're no longer in front of the person. Like, there's going to be no dead air. Until I leave. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 I, I, I try to be a good listener, at home. Lisa, but yeah. <laughs> No, I'm just saying, I mean, like I could do puzzles at home and watch TV and listen to my podcast and documentaries and all of that. But also if you put me in front of another human, I'm not going to be quiet. Like I'm going to socialize. Oh, 100%, 100%. And that's my kids too. It's like, can you please be quiet? Can we scratch something from your social calendar, your activity list, your extracurriculars, please? So we can have a life, but that is our life right now. I mean, that's just when you sign up to homeschool, it is it, it it is a way of life more than it is an education choice, kind of. Well, and I think if you have not homeschooled or you don't know people who homeschool, you mm -hmm. don't really know what it's like because you just don't know that thing. And I think that's true with anything. Like just like I was talking about time, you're talking about homeschool. I think because we can learn so much about all of the different ways that you can be a human and live, it's exponential that you can't know everything, even though it is available to us now to know everything. And when you say things, you can't filter it through every single possible lens it could be listened to through. It's really, it's really hard to talk today. <laughs> well, that, that, that reminds me of something else we say in our house. You know, we say everybody's been somewhere, mm -hmm. um, you know, get to know the person, the person you see in front of you is not the same person that they were. I mean, they are the same person, but we grow and we learn and we change so much through life that we're not the same as we were five years ago, 10 years ago, whatever. And that was something really important too, as I progressed through this organizing journey was looking back at the photos 
It was looking mm-hmm. back and going, oh my goodness, that my definition of me being disorganized has changed. Like this is blowing my mind. Um, I look back at photos and I'm like, oh, that's what I thought disorganization was. Oh my word. Now my definition isn't as bad, I guess, uh, is, is how I would say it. My cousin and I just recently, my sister cousin, Jennifer, um, we did our own planning retreat. I love my mom this. has a cabin on a pond. And so we watched the replay of planning day and we had all our paperwork and we brought our favorite snacks and drinks and we just had a great time. It didn't overnight. And what I realized is I had no time to get my stuff together. I, you know, I had this whole big plan, right? My plan to, I want to pull from this and I want to pull from that. And I want to pull, and I might want to work on this and get it organized. I didn't, I just opened up a crate and started dumping stuff in. I threw binders in, I threw office supplies in, I grabbed my printer just in case. Um, And I took a picture of it and I sent it to my cousin and I was thinking, this was me feeling disorganized now, a year and a half ago, two years ago, that would have been me organized. So it's so interesting how I'm progressing through, not that I'm getting pickier, but I can see the progress in that. Like this was mm-hmm. two, two crates and my printer. This was me throwing it all together for a weekend of planning versus what it would have been a year and a half you know, ago. I had a similar thing happen in that you know, I used to fly by the seat of my pants way too much. And I mean, I'm a doer. I don't sit, I do, we're very active. We're very involved in multiple things. We're multi-passionate. We lead things, we participate in things. We try not to take over everything we do. I say we, because my husband and I are wired the same in this regard. Um, But way too many things were like to the last minute, to the last minute, to the last minute. And I used to think, oh, this is just how I'm wired. I'm just a procrastinator. I get my best energy, my best ideas right under the wire, right up to the last minute. And although that had been true up to that point, what I realized after implementing Organized 365 and your teachings and some of your thinking and really letting that simmer and to try to implement them, I realized, wait a minute, I've trained myself to be that way. I've trained my body and my brain to get the, the hit, the dopamine hit, the endorphin hit, whichever, you know, which, whichever chemical it is from that last minute surge of urgency. So doing the Sunday basket, <clears throat> having that as a routine, excuse me, um, I'm, I realized I need to teach myself to get the same hit from getting it done ahead of time as yes. pushing it up to the wire where it's frantic and, and you, you have to, and that's where the energy comes from, but it's the, I get to, and I want to, and I still don't have this perfect. I still have things that come at me that I have to do up to the wire. I still have things that I can tend to put off, but I'm getting better and better at identifying those things and getting that surge from feeling proactive and in control. Like we have to be careful mm-hmm. about saying in control, because how much are we really in control of other than ourselves? Um, but feeling that sense of, of, of choice and, and it's proactive. I mean, the word, the, the perfect word for it is being proactive, but I've retrained, I'm learning to retrain my brain and I'm learning that my definition of what is disorganized in myself, you know, what does that look like? I hit a span of time where I was, I was feeling crazy. I was feeling unhinged actually is the word I use to describe myself. And what I realized I had not done my. I had not really done my Sunday basket routine for like three weeks. I had picked and chose little fires, but I had not done the concentrated effort of sort it out, put it into categories, pick, pick a few times in the week, make yourself aware of what's coming and what you need to do. And and I didn't like that feeling. What I realized was that was the feeling I had for so many years of my life. Like I functioned there. It wasn't occasional. So now when I have that feeling, I'm like, Oh, I don't like this. I don't want to be like this. I was like this forever. So I love that I can, even in the off, off season, off time, I have a system to go back to. I have a foundation to return to. So tell us about, I know you have adapted or you've used the home school work box. Tell us about Mm. how that works for you and what you've done with it. I know you're going to be one of our camp counselors at home school camp. I'm so excited. excited. I am so excited. excited. So tell us about your work box. 
Um, okay, so after the Sunday basket, the next box that I got was the homeschool work box. And um, that's what it was called. It was a separate thing. You had several separate boxes at that time. I love how you um, consolidated and kind of funneled them into two places. I think that works so perfect. And <clears throat> I was still learning how to differentiate my work and the things I was mm -hmm. doing, you know, through all that teaching, the planning days, and obviously the, the productive home solution the kids program, you know, that taught me a lot. That's a whole other thing we could talk about is the kids program and launch program and all that. Uh, Cause I have it all people. I just, I, I have it all. I'm doing it all. Um, so when I first jumped into that, it was structured a little differently than it is now. I love how you have taken that education work box and really refined it. And I think it's beautiful. It taught what it taught me is it gave me um, places to separate because when you homeschool, that was so hard to say, this is my home planning. This is my homeschool planning. Because to me, they just did this, which was mm -hmm. debilitating because then it's hard to decide what's the priority when everything is. Um, and it was hard to, to stick with um, a plan, a focus of priority because, oh, yes, we're doing the math lesson, but <clears throat> the baby needs their diaper change and I need to switch that laundry. I'm here. I might as well. Oh, I need to set that stuff out for dinner. I'm here. It was hard to protect the homeschooling time. And don't get me wrong, that multitasking, letting your machines work for you while you're schooling your kids, there's advantages to that. But it let me, it gave me permission to compartmentalize my school and to put things in a place. Um, mm -hmm. Now, by the time I found this work box, which I wish would have been 10 years ago, 20 years ago, let's be honest. Um, but by the time I found it, I was fairly established with my last two kids at home. We chose to step into classical conversations, which is a curriculum and a community, you know, all rolled into one, you have your assignments laid out and the books you're going to use that's already decided for you, which is very unlike me because I'm the person who someone's going to tell me what to do. Well, I can make it better. I'm going to modify that. I'm going to make that better. It, but we really just, we, we embraced it. So they, we, we, we had a plan sort of, so there wasn't quite as much loose stuff to put in my mm -hmm. homeschool work box. But at the same time, there was so much because I realized I was trying to, to define these things as the same when they weren't. Even though we were here, we were in our home, I was staying home, they needed to be separated so I could be more effective and more present in whatever I was doing. So a lot of that modification came with um, you know, looking at routines for my kids in a better light. You talk about the back to school blitz changed our lives. You know, when we did the back to school blitz together, they sat with me, they watched the videos. We, <laughs> you know, they had already done some Lisa school with the kids program. So they were used to you, you know, um, and it made us stop and look at time differently, you know, and they were entering into high school. So another level of accountability for them to try to do some things on your own. And I do not have perfect children. Please do not hear that we wake up in the morning and they rise up and call me blessed and they are just can't wait for the knowledge they're going to incur that day through their schooling. No, that is, not, that is a myth also of homeschooling. Um, so we're just people, we're kids, they're just my kids. I'm their mom. We're doing the best we can. Um, but it, it was the ability to categorize. Again, you gave me permission to work that box the way that I needed to for my kids in their stage with the curriculum we're using because we transitioned from what CC calls foundations and essentials, which is elementary, into the challenge levels, which is seventh grade all the way up to 12th grade, A, B, and then one, two, three, four. Those challenge levels come, they're, they're weightier. They are, you get this guide and it really tells you just what you're doing for the week. It's not a day-to-day -day checklist, you know, so it's that breaking down and looking at time. So um, through using the homeschool box, then I realized, oh, I need to put my math tutoring in here. Because at the time, up until just recently, on every Thursday for about six years, I've tutored math. 
all the way from pre-algebra to pre-calculus, whatever the needs are of the homeschool people I know. Um, several classes, I needed to separate that. My husband and I are very involved in our homeschool sports organization. Go Chargers! Um, in <laughs> fact, we're in the process of hopefully build, well, we are, we're starting the process of building a homeschool sports facility, like a complex. We needed a box for that. You know, my husband needed his own box. But, and even though at the time they weren't all separate full Sunday baskets per se, it taught me to take all of these things that are feel like they're randomly floating around. Um, in fact, I told this story. Can I tell a story? Sure. I told this story yesterday. Okay. Have you seen Harry Potter movies? No. We're big Harry Potter. We're big Harry Potter fans in our house. We're Harry Potter fans, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, you know, all the all the big franchises. We're nerds. Um, so there's this scene in one of the movies where this professor lets out what he calls pixie. Well, you hear pixie and you think, oh, it's this cute little, you know, no, no, they're basically terror with wings and they're flying around and they're, they're aggravating the kids and they're throwing books and they're everywhere. And they're just all over this room. And the kids are like, what do we do? I don't know. Panic ensues. And finally, one of the little wizard children does a spell and they freeze in the air. They're not dead. They're just stunned and floating there. So then the kids can collect them and put them into their cages. And I'm like, that's what my brain feels like. It's like these little fairies, these little pixies that are and they're throwing things and they're going everywhere. And I have to just stop. It's like a brain dump. A good brain dump is to me, what does this? You stop you capture those little pixies and you put them in the cage they belong in and then you <laughs> deal with them later, you know? So. <laughs> oh so my gosh, that's such I, a I great story. I know. I'm I, anyway, I'm kind of goofy like that, but it, all of these different compartments to people laugh. Oh, you have so many Sunday baskets or you have so many, you know, um, of these containers. It just makes sense. It allows you to then enter into, because that's one of the things I still work on is when I'm in a thing, be in that thing yeah, and then move. Yes, we have to multitask. And when you're in the thick of lots of little kids at home, that I'm in a different stage. Now, could I have benefited from a lot of these teachings? 100% absolutely. Like if this was me 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and, and Organized 365 would have been there where, where they were now, I could totally see where I could have learned but I wouldn't be at the capacity I am right now. So I'm at the phase of life where I'm sunsetting myself out of homeschooling. I'm working myself out of that job. I have two more years while my kids are in high school. I've been doing it for 21 plus, whatever. Whatever you decide when homeschooling starts at birth, when they actually be kindergartners, I don't know. Do the math, I have a 25 year old. Um, but uh, it, it um, I totally lost my thought. See? What do you have more of now? Oh, geez. Capacity. Um, I have more capacity. I have more, my husband would say confidence, mm -hmm. but he sees more confidence in me. And I think that we kind of dialed that back one time on one of our road trips. I'm like, what do you mean by that? You know, cause working with CC, I'm going to ask great questions. Cause I've been a director in the challenge program. You know, I'm all about the questions. Um, I think it comes from the decision-making that I've learned mm. to, um, to make those decisions based on what I need, what my family needs, where, where I want to go, not in a selfish way, but in, in, a, in a society and family kind of way. And being confident that I, I can decide to get rid of those shoes. I mean, it started as simple as that, being crippled, because if I got rid of something, I paid good money for it. I, yes. you know, what if I needed it again? What yes. this so-and-so gave it to me? I've had it forever. All of those things that, Okay, decision fatigue, that's your podcast if that resonates with somebody. Um, so it's decision making capacity. Um, it is uh, more confidence. And with that, you know, the time, I think that's an obvious thing. Everyone says time, and that's just true. If you're more planned and you're more orderly, you you have more time. And then these other things come along. So that's my question. What do you answer. wish you knew sooner? Oh, oh my goodness. Um, that I wasn't broken. Mm -hmm. Um, wow, I'm going to get a little teary. <laughs> you know, I, I am a, and I don't say this with pride, but I'm an intelligent, 
hardworking, multi-talented, multi-passionate, like so many other women, um, woman. And I just felt broken. Like I just can't get a handle on this. I felt like I was spinning my wheel for so many. And I don't say this, like I'm not being dramatic. This is the brutal honesty here. Um, you know, I even doubted homeschooling my kids. Oh, I'm going to ruin them. I don't know. I'm not very good at writing. I, can I really, you know, teach them the things they need to be taught? I just felt broken. I wish I'd known that it was okay to be in the season I'm in and quit wishing that my season looked different or that I was in a different season. Cause I kind of accidentally with my first two wished away a few of their best years because I thought the next year's would be quote better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, that's definitely where I was when I started organized 365, when I turned 40, I was like, how in the heck did I get so disorganized? How am I so out of control? How is everything around me breaking or broken? I mean, like how, how did I get, how did I end up here? I'm only 40. If I live to be a hundred, are you kidding me? This is what the next 60 years are going to be like. Oh. I cannot do this. And then in a couple of years, when I was organizing women and I saw them change as they got, as their homes got organized, their identities, their capacities, what they wanted to do change. And I watched before my eyes, I was like, oh my gosh, this, this is the problem with women today. Their homes are holding them back. They are trapped at home. They feel like they are broken. Somebody has said something to them and they believed it and they yeah, should have never yeah, believed I it. Right. And it's so freeing to know that just be where you are. You can make where you are better for where you are. And don't try to like fast forward too quickly and don't try to be like somebody else. Like we, it's good to look to people as our mentors and as those that are going before us and ahead of us, but don't wish yourself away. And something else I learned, I learned this through homeschooling. I had a homeschool mom tell me when I felt like you know, I had my two boys and then when they were six, seven and eight, by the time they were seven and eight, I had the other two, which was a boy and a girl. And they were only 13 months apart. It was just crazy. Um, and I had someone say to me, cause I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't making progress. I wasn't good enough. I was, you know, all the things that we, that we tell ourselves that are terrible. We would never say this to a friend right. who's sitting across the table from us. Right. Why do we let this go in our brain? I don't know. But she said to me, listen, Rhonda, you have to pause and take stock. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, where were you six months ago? Where were you a year ago? Especially because my oldest son was diagnosed finally at age 11, Asperger's and um, ADHD. And I know that diagnosis looks a little different nowadays, but it was interesting because when we pursued that diagnosis, nobody that we talked to went, what? Are you kidding? <laughs> Everybody was like, oh, okay, okay. Because I always knew he marched mm. to the beat of a different drummer, but I had unrealistic expectations at times, you know, for him, myself, and then everybody else. So she was like, take stock. Look at where you were six months ago. And are you, yeah. have you moved forward? Where were you a year ago? Where were you five years ago? Whether it be with your home, with your health, with your kids, with their education, with their behavior, with like, we could go all over the place. And that was such um, uh, great advice at that time. I really mm -hmm. needed to hear it because I was beating myself up way too much. And I think as I started the podcast nine years ago and decided I would teach people online how to get organized, I knew that there were elements out there that were working and had worked for me in the past, but overall there wasn't a complete curriculum to pe teach people, especially if they had never mm. been organized before how to learn to be organized if you want to start in your 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, like, how, or you're 25 and you came from a disorganized family. Like, how do you, how do you reach through audio all different ages and, and meet them where they are? And if they have what they think are no organizing skills, which is impossible, but you see what I'm saying up to what yeah. they believe is a perfect standard. 
I had to undo a lot of the learning people had about what is the finish line. It's not perfection, it's excellence, about how long it's going to take. It's not a weekend, it's you know three years, about how you do it. Okay, you pick one area and you do that area and you maintain that area and then you add the next, you add the next. You're like, oh my gosh, there's so many programs, there's so many services. Can't you make it less? No, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that no one else in the world has created all the different solutions for how you organize all the different spaces, but anyone you know who's organized and you go in their house, they've figured this out on their own. Just nobody else has sold it to you as a course because there's no product related. There's no product. Yeah. So the consumer packaging companies didn't create it because how are they going to sell it if it's not a product? Well, and that you bring up such a great point because the, the, the programs you have, and I, and I think why it was so successful to me is I love um, casting a net wide. I like to see what's the big vision purpose before I focus on something that's detailed. Because if I, I, I don't like to do things just for the sake of doing things. I like there to be purpose. Okay, dishes, laundry. We, we can't even put that in that category. You have to do it. Anyway, this is the definition of infinity is what we say in our house. Dishes and laundry, that's infinity. Um, but when I look back at myself before kids, I was organized. And I mean, I was getting my master's degree and my towels and my bathroom were perfectly matching, folded and color coordinated. And there wasn't anything dirty and da, 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 da. And I knew my calendar and I knew my schedule. And I think the problem is that as we add the accumulation phase, as we add things and people and you know households and, and relationships and responsibilities, we don't adjust how we have right. um, carried yep. ourselves. I couldn't carry myself in my mid to late twenties with two babies the same way I carried myself when I was 21 and in college. And that was my only main responsibility was my own schedule, my own work, my own school. I could hold it all in my head. I wrote some of it down, but I think that, that you bring up a good point because you know, looking at this big picture and me being in, embedded into the programs and courses for so long now, I need all of it. Like, yes, you can absolutely make major progress just by listening to the podcast, but you haven't heard all that Lisa has to say. Yes, you can work on your paper, but you haven't heard all, the, you know, it, it's like that pebble. It's like, there's a pebble that goes in the pond and it's concentric circles. You need to like, enter into all the circles to really get the full benefit of the things you have to say and the things that Organize 365 is teaching and is putting out there. Um, it, it, not that you have to buy all of it. Maybe this was just me. I needed all of it. I needed to hear all of it. That's why I go back and listen to older podcasts again. That's to remind myself of a mindset. That's why I love planning day. I do home planning day. I do workbox planning day. Um, I have all the programs. Like if there's a box, just check it. I think I have it all. Um, because I had those facets in my life mm -hmm. and it, it's kind of like reading a book. You don't judge the whole book by just reading a chapter. You can't do that. Or just by hearing someone else's take on it. You need to read it for yourself, cover to cover mm -hmm. the whole thing, hear the whole vision, hear the whole voice then you can really speak to or implement, you know, whatever it's saying. So what would you say to someone who's just starting out? They're like, all right, fine. I'm going to stop listening. I'm going to start doing <laughs> Rhonda. What do I need to do? Um, be sure you're listening to the podcast and go back too. go back because as you Lisa have progressed through uh -huh. your personal journey and your yep. organized 365 journey, the podcasts have progressed and they're oh, wonderful. Yeah. I love it. I love all the new content, but go back, go find some of the 2017, 2018, 2019, some of those podcasts or before um, and, and progress through listening. But then I, if you don't have a Sunday basket, just get it because, and, and we probably, you need to stop calling it the Sunday basket and you need to start calling it the Sunday course. Because what you're really buying, not really, you keep calling it whatever you want. Um, but what you're buying, it's not just because someone will look at it and go, oh, that's just a box of folders. I can do that. That's not what it is. It is a, it is a course. It is a mm -hmm. system. It is processes. It is ongoing support. It is, you know, so many things that it is 
It's not just a box and some folders. Now, if you are really already kind of organized, you have your own system and, and you can do a DIY and it's fine, I would say, fine, that's good, but it would be great. Even if you're an organized person, you are going to learn and pick up things that will infiltrate other areas of your life. So I would say Sunday basket and as much as you can afford money wise, just get it and just go. <laughs> Rhonda, thank you so much. This How's has that? been so great. I love talking with you and we will see yeah. you in uh, teacher camp and homeschool camp. Yes, I can't wait. Thank you. Thanks, Rhonda.